Hi, I'm Chris. And I'm Cherie. And we are at Technomadia.com and uh, this is our home on wheels, our vintage bus. And look, we matched our outfits today. I didn't even notice we, that. We didn't even plan to film today, <laughs> but we wanted to talk about one of the questions we get asked all the time is, can you run an RV air conditioner off of solar power? Alone. And that's usually what people mean, is <laughs> yeah. just solar panels. Can you run an RV air conditioner? Now, most air conditioners that come equipped with RVs are on the rooftop and they draw anywhere between 1400, 1700 watts of power. 14, yeah, even up to 2000 watts on a hot, humid day. An air conditioner uses a lot more power when it's hot and humid out. And that is a lot of power. And so if you think about it, how much solar is it going to take to keep up with that? A lot. So if you just run an air conditioner off of solar power, you're going to need 1500 to 2000 watts of panels. And you have rooftop air conditioners. You don't have and, that much roof space usually. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that's, that's just to keep you going during the, the heat of the day. Um, now air conditioners, they do cycle on and off. They go between having a compressor on that uses a ton of power and then just the blowers and just the fans when the compressor is not needed. But on a hot and humid day, your compressor is basically going nonstop just to try and keep the air cool and dehumidified. So unless you're designing a system around running solar off, running air conditioners off of solar, you're probably not going to be able to do it full time or at least enough to make it worthwhile. It's a very expensive investment to put much that solar on. Now you can go alternate methods. You can have ground deployed so solar. You can have it maybe on a trailer that you're pulling or, or you can go with lower power air conditioning systems. Yeah. Or you can just really go all out on the roof and people do it. It has been done. We have friends who have gone crazy with solar on the roof, but it's a lot bigger, trickier job than most people imagine to go 100% solar for running an air conditioner. Now, what we've done is something a little bit different, is we knew that we didn't want to optimize for off-grid living while it's really hot out. And we don't have enough roof space anyway. Our <laughs> roof just our, isn't big enough. Not on our roof, we don't anyway. But we have a, um, a hybrid or a boosting inverter that we can actually run our air conditioner off of batteries. And so while our batteries are, are being drained, the solar is supplementing and actually we can you know get about half of our power coming from the sun, half coming from batteries. Depending Let's on our, the sun. Yeah, <laughs> and can make our batteries last a whole lot longer running the air conditioner. So it takes a real hefty inverter to be able to do this, but it works. So let's talk about the equipment that we have in our bus that makes this work. Uh, we've got a 3000 watt hybrid or boosting inverter. Ours is from Victron. There's mm -hmm. other models out there as well now that have come on the market. We went with Victron because that's what was available five years yep. ago when we designed our system. And then we have a um, 500 amp hours of lithium battery. And so if you're doing really high current loads like an air conditioner, lithium really makes a ton of sense. Um, they're much better suited to drawing high current, powering high current loads. And then up on the roof, we have eight 100 watt solar panels. Um, and then we do have some other supplemental panels that we can put out on the ground for some place yep. longer term to give us a little more. Um, that boosting inverter though is what really gives us lots of flexibility. The situation we're in right now is we are driveway surfing, or as you might want to call it, mooch docking uh, with friends. And all they have is a simple 15 amp hour plug, just your typical wall Front plug. Front porch wall plug with a long extension cord. And normally an RV, you click flip on the air conditioner and it'll be blowing the circuit breaker um, in the house. Uh, but, well, thanks to our Victron, that doesn't happen now. So what we're able to do is the solar, when the sun is out like it is right now, as you can see on my face, we're getting probably about 600-ish. 600 600-ish, 700 watts of power. Remember, you're not, not always, always going to get 100% of the power out of your rating, uh, especially not during your yeah. peak hours of the day. Um, so yeah, we're getting about 600 watts right now. We're pulling in anywhere between 1300 and 1400 from the shore, or our, our host's uh, right. plug-in. And then any other that we need to supplement to run an air conditioner, which ours is running about 1700 watts, right. we'll be able to pull from the batteries. And that's allowing us not to deplete those batteries. All right, so, so this way, by the end of the day, you know, once it starts to get a little bit cooler late evening, um, our batteries are you know around, around 60% or so, still doing really great. And then they will charge up overnight once the air conditioner is not needing to run full time, uh, charge up off the wall current. And meanwhile, we've not blown a breaker and made ourselves bad guests here. Um, so having a hybrid boosting inverter like this is one of the most wonderful things that um, I wouldn't want to be in somebody's driveway without it. <laughs> We've also, we utilize this when we're in scenic places that we want to camp. Like just last week, we had beachfront camping uh, <laughs> and the, uh, the campground had the post. So assuming you were backing in, well, we wanted to go forward in so we got the best view 
and we only had a 30 amp cord that we could run with that much mm. length and that allowed us to run both air conditioners when we needed to yep. using the boosting just a little bit yep. here and there yep. so yeah running two air conditioners off a 30 amp cord without blowing a breaker again the, the boosting inverter just let us supplement with the battery when the both air conditioners needed to be on at the same time oh and there's the cat <laughs> <laughs> Cat always goes on the leash. She's gonna go explore while we go play with tech. One of the things that's really critical is when you've got a, a boosting or hybrid inverter is to set the shore current limit so that you don't um, blow the circuit breakers wherever you're plugged in and you don't overload the circuit. So if you're using a long extension cord, you might even dial it down below the level of the circuit breakers. So on the Victron, we've got the Victron color control um, user interface here that gives us a really beautiful visual display of our batteries and systems. But I can just go over to the inverters control here and I can see exactly how much power and what the, the state of the shore current is and then I could set an input current limit so say hey I want to really make sure I don't blow a breaker let's just go down to 11 amps um, or you know I don't want to do it here because we are on a shore thing but I can go to all the way up to 50 or 30 or anything else and set whatever the power limit I want to have here so right here, we're on a, a driveway with an extension cord. I'm keeping it at, you know, 13 amp limit, pretty safe. Okay, so we're gonna show you what the power draw is from the air conditioner and then show you different states of going from shore power, solar, and totally off our batteries, which we can do with our setup. So we have the Dometic setup. Uh, we're using the Penguin air conditioners. We have 15,000 BTU in the front, which is what we are going to be showing these numbers for. I'm just gonna turn it to cool and we'll hear the air conditioner over your head come on shortly and you can see, see the power coming on just the blower kicking in here and you see it rising up and right now it's all running off of shore power just fine but now as the compressor is about to kick in in a second there you have the compressor you see assisting kicks in now we're actually combining shore power with battery power with solar power Unfortunately, the sun is behind some clouds right now, so we're not getting a ton of solar power, but we're able to now get a lot more use out of our um, batteries, and we can run this all day like this um, um, without blowing a breaker. Especially because throughout the day, the, the solar is going to be fluctuating, and as it comes up, then we're going to be taking less power out of the batteries over here, and that's one way that we can balance our, our energy draws. If we were running this load of 1700 watts continuously out of the battery, we can typically do about two, two and a half hours with our 500 amp hours of battery. Okay, so now we've pulled the plug on the shore power, so we're running completely off the battery right now. So you can see we're drawing zero watts from the shore. Everything is coming straight out of the battery. And oh, actually right now, all of our systems are running on solar power, the sun has come out. So we're charging the battery, running our DC loads, running our AC loads. But now I'm gonna start the air conditioner again. There goes the blower. Now we're running at a bit of a deficit, uh, just a few hundred watts, just a hundred watts coming out of the battery right now. Um, mostly everything is still being powered by solar. But once the compressor kicks in, you'll see just how much power this uh, air conditioning can draw. There we go. And this is all coming off the batteries. And well, now solar as well. So we're getting 500 watts of solar. The air conditioning load is uh, 1600 watts. And uh, that's actually the, the current we're pulling out of the batteries is 123 amps out of the batteries. Those are DC amps out of the batteries. Um, that's the kind of current you do not want to pull out of lead acid batteries. You really want to have um, um, either really good quality AGMs or even better, much, much better lithium batteries. You're going to draw currents that long, that's that, that heavy for a very long period of time. Okay, so we've had our system, uh, well, we've had the lithium batteries for going on five years now in and the we inverter. Did, we did the lithium in inverter first and then we added solar. Uh, the solar was done in, was it 2013? I think so. Yeah, something yeah. like that. We've had solar for for long enough to really fall in love with our solar install. 
and we absolutely love our batteries and inverter and the cap capabilities they give us. Uh, we always ask how much it costs to do a setup like this. Our batteries, we built the bank ourselves. We bought the raw cells and then bundled them together. So it was around three, thousand thirty five hundred dollars yep. plus fuses I, let's just say four thousand yep. we bought the cells from elite power solutions in phoenix and uh, they were great great support in helping us build our batteries from scratch and this back five years ago nobody else was really doing that the uh, victron inverter was around 1800 and i believe the color control panel goes for 500 about 500 we 5%. got the, the after we'd written about how much we loved the inverter victron actually wrote us asked if we'd like to beta test the color control panel so we so, got that from them and we've given them a lot of feedback on how to make it more appropriate for our viewers so yeah, if you go with that one, you'll get a lot of these interfaces because of Suggestions us. from us, yes. Um, and then the solar, which we installed uh, the panels, and we did pay AM Solar to do the installation on that. It was around, I think, 3500 So, yeah. yeah, somewhere between nine and $10,000 to do a setup like this to be able to support it. Are you going to get that paid back by saving campground fees? Over time, yes, you will. But more importantly for us, it's all about what? Flexibility. Quality I mean, of life. Quality of life, flexibility, being able to go where we want, do what we want. We love it. And yeah, being able to stay here near my friends. I still can't believe we color matched our outfits. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. <laughs> so that's a quick wrap up of how our uh, how we use our air conditioning and uh, kind of some of the flexibility our setup gives us. Yes. And do I wish we had more solar panels? Well, I don't wish we had more roof space. Our roof is just perfectly sized and we've got as much as we can. If the panels were twice as efficient, that'd be awesome. But, yes. you know. Without there making, we, we, we could put more up there, but it would Not look, really. it would look, yeah. it would look Aesthetics. right. Aesthetics. So yeah, 800 watts of solar panels gets us a lot of great life. So we're loving it. Thanks. See you next time.